Namaste. And taking the feet into a Badavadasana. So the soles of the feet are together, the knees are open. Let's give the knees a gentle rock side to side, doesn't allow the hips to settle. Hands either on the abdomen or resting at the sides of the body at a time, wherever they feel comfortable to be. Try to lengthen through the back of the neck without restricting the breath. And then taking just a couple of deep breaths, just allowing your body to arrive, have the mind settle. To see how your body is feeling on a physical sense. Just noticing anything that we need to take care of during this evening's practice. As always, please do modify things if we need to. Ignore things if you need to. So now even just a few breaths later after lying on the floor, just see if you can soften any further into your body. Let the shoulders drop another nudge towards the ground. Or soften the back of the ribs, soften the hips, anywhere that's subconsciously gripping. Taking a couple more breaths, starting to build in this ujjayi sound to the breath. On your next inhale, let's lift the hands up towards the ceiling. Just give your wrists a roll around, give the hands a stretch out. And then interlace the fingers together and flip the palms up to face the ceiling. So stretching out the hands. Keep pressing up the palms so the outer shoulders lift away from your mat. Holding there, take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, let the shoulder blades just soften back down to the floor. Again, as you inhale, pressing the palms up. And as you exhale, soften them down. Once again, inhale to press up. Exhale, soften down. Now release hold of the fingers, but take hold of alternate elbows. And then draw the arms back behind your head. Taking a couple of deep breaths here, using the inhales to expand as much space as you can feel into the rib cage. And using the exhales now to knit the lower ribs in towards the abdomen, so closing everything in with a bit of strength. Allow the pelvic floor to scoop up towards the ribs, so you feel the bonders engaging, that strength again coming around the core. From here, just slide the hands so they interlace again and place your head into the hands. Take a deep breath in where you are, and all you do on your exhale is just draw the spine in towards the ground. So maybe slightly tucking the tailbone. Press the feet together to relieve a little bit of pressure out of the hips, and draw the spine down so it's imprinting into your, into your mat. Now hold here, take another breath in, and as you exhale, lift the head and the shoulders up. Keep the elbows wide, so we're reaching upwards through the breastbone. Inhale, take the head back to the floor. We'll take another five breaths here. So exhale, lifting head and shoulders up till the abdominals pull down. Inhale, head to the floor. Exhale, fully scooping up. Inhale, head to the floor. Exhaling fully. Two more, inhale. Exhale. Inhaling, exhale, bring the head back to the floor, close the knees in towards each other again, and then just drop the knees in towards each other, the feet open, just let the hips get a little bit of counter pose, at the back just relax, find softness. On your next exhale, scoop the knees in towards your chest. Bring the hands around the shins. Just take a gentle rock side to side. And then bringing the legs into a happy baby. So holding onto the shoelace bits of the feet and open the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. 
So using the elbows, keep the knees pressing open, the fingers pull the feet down. On your next exhale, try and draw the tailbone into the floor. So you feel the spine flatten or lengthen to the ground. Keep the breath moving nice and strong. If it feels more comfortable for your back, just keep that rocking a little. Then, of course, please do. You're going to keep your right leg exactly as it is. Send the left leg away in front of you, the left arm back behind you. So the left side of your body is really lengthening out. Keep the right sole of the foot facing the ceiling and the elbow is still pressing that knee open. Take another deep breath in where you are. And as you exhale, bring that knee back in towards you, switching sides in your own time. So left foot is open in that happy baby, and right foot lengthens way, right arm reaches back. Might give you a little clunk in the hip. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, bring that right knee back in towards you. So releasing the feet, coming into the right angle of the legs. Interlace the hands together again behind the back of the head. We fight with a fast frog for us abs. So fan the toes, keep the knees stuck directly above the hips, but pull the lower spine down into the floor. So sacrum is rooted to the ground. So this time, lift the elbows up and towards the temples. We find that wrapping of shoulder blades. Keep the head on the ground. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, just your right leg is going to open out to the side. The knee dropping towards the floor, keeping the heel above the knee. So your heel is reaching up. Good. Take a deep breath in. Now as you exhale, lift the head and shoulders up. It's three parts for each side. Take another deep breath in. On the third part, your exhale pulls the abdominals down, try and curl the tailbone up, like you're pulling pubic bone towards the navel. Inhale, come back center, legs back together, head to the floor. Exhale one, opens the left knee out into that half frog position, flex the foot. Inhale. Exhale two, lift the head and shoulders up, the abdominals down. Stay where you are, inhale three. Exhale, pull the abdominals down, curl the tailbone up pubic bone to navel. Inhale, come back center, head to the floor. Spin so once more either side. So keep the head down. Exhale, right leg opens out to the side. Stay there, breathe in. Exhale, lift the head and shoulders up. Stay there, breathe in. Exhale, curl the tailbone under any further so the pubic bone reaches towards the navel. Inhale, come back to center, legs together, head to floor. Left side, exhale one, open the knee out. Stay where you are, breathe in. Exhale two, lift the head and shoulders up. Stay where you are, breathe in. Exhale three, just deepen into it, curling the tailbone up, reach the elbows high. Inhale, come back to center, we have one more round, head to floor. So exhale one, right knee opens. Inhale. Exhale, two, lift the head and shoulders up. Stay where you are, breathe in. Exhale, three, deepen in, abdominals pull down, elbows reaching up. Inhale, bring everything back to the start. Left side, exhale, one, opens the knee. Stay where you are, breathe in. Exhale, two, lift the head and shoulders up. Stay where you are, breathe in. And exhale, three, deepen in, abdominal sound, reach the elbows further up. Inhale, come back to the center, bring the knees in towards your chest and the hands around the shins. Take a gentle rock side to side. Cross one ankle over the other, take a gentle rock through seated. And taking the legs out in front of you. Hands at the side of the hips, we suddenly stand us and the legs out flat in front. Little mini bend in the knees if that helps us sit upright. If you have bricks handy, if it's helpful, place the bricks under your hands here so you have some contact with the floor. Not necessary, but if, you're, if they're helpful, then do use them. So we're going to take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, press down into the hands so you feel the hips lift or lighten off the floor. Now, this depends on your arm length as well, so maybe just getting a lightening of the hips, maybe they're lifted a little way off the ground. Take another breath in. 
As you exhale, sit down to the floor. Bring the fingers next to your knees, so fingertips to the floor here. Take a breath in. As you exhale, lean back, push the fingertips into the ground, lift the heels up off the ground. If it's easier, do one leg and then switch. Take a breath in. Exhale, feet down. One more on either side, so hands next to hips, breathe in to prepare. Exhale, press into palms, lift the hips up, try and press out of the shoulders, breathe in. Exhale, soften the hips down, fingertips come forwards, breathe in. Exhale, lean back slightly, lift the heels, maybe one at a time, keep switching, take a breath in. Exhale, heels down. Find a soft fold over the legs. Let them relax completely. Still be cool through the body. So don't worry if this first fold feels utterly horrendous around your back or your hamstrings. Take a couple more breaths where you are. And slowly start to roll yourself back up to seated. So bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet together as we start with the practice in Baddha Padasana, soles of the feet together, knees open. Good, now holding on to the shoelace bit of your feet, tuck the thumbs in towards the soles of the feet, thumbs kind of pressing to the space between the balls of the feet so you can feel that softer pad, there's a little pressure point in there. So then curl the big toes back towards you so your feet feel quite active. So it gives you something a little bit more rigid to hold on to. And then use those strong feet to then lift the chest up so spine lengthens. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, bow forward to keep the shoulders coming down your back. Good. As you inhale, press the legs up into your elbows. Find some resistance with them. And as you exhale, let the knees soften out. So take three more breaths with that tense and release if our hips are feeling okay to do so. Inhale, press up into elbows and exhale, soften the knees out. Inhale, press up into elbows, find resistance. Exhale to soften. Last one, inhale, pressing up into elbows. Exhale, soften, bow the head down towards the toes. Just stay soft with it, but take another couple of breaths. And then gently roll the spine back up straight again. See if from here we can keep hold of the feet or the big toes. So please fingers wrap in to hold big toe. Again, keep the feet feeling really strong here so we don't pull the toes out of the feet. Um, rock your weight backwards into the sit bones. See if the heels can hover off the floor. Strong toes. If you feel uncomfortable in the toes, hold the feet instead. If, if we can, here, take the feet open so find a straddle poise, boat pose. Nice, take a deep breath in and slowly with control bring it back through to Baddha Padasana, heels together, bow back forwards towards the toes again last time. Take a breath. Release, hold the feet, roll yourself back up straight. Use the hands under the knees to lift them back up again. And just give the knees a little rock side to side. Roll over into all fours. Spread the palms open into the ground. And then like you would paddling your feet in a downward dog, just paddle through your hands. So get the fingers flat to the floor, just lift one palm and then the other palm are stretching out through the palms, the hands, the fingers, the wrists. Then take the back of your left hand to the floor. So the fingers are facing towards your knee. Without putting too much weight into it, just holding there and really try to straighten your arm. So if you can rotate the forearm, let me show you. So the crease of your elbow is trying to rotate forwards. If that doesn't make sense to your arm, then don't worry about it. Just go as straight as you can with the arm. Now scrunch up that hand into the tightest fist that you can, but keep the back of your hand on the floor. Again, it might not feel very nice in your forearm, and then relax the fingers. Take two or three more scrunches as tight as you can with your hand. Keep the elbow really, really straight and relax. And scrunching again, keep the elbow straight and relax it. Good. Unravel your palms, the palms back to the floor, and then try the other side. So back of the right hand to the floor. The fingers are facing your knee without putting too much weight into the wrist. 
Breathe straight in the elbow, and if you can, rotate the crease of the elbow to be forwards. This will engage the right alignment, the forearm that we're strengthening now. So scrunch up your hand, the straighter your arm is, the more engagement you'll feel through the forearm. It might feel a little bit crampy. Relax it, scrunch it up again. Relax it, always makes my toes feel scrunch as well for some reason. And last one, scrunching. And relax it, and then flip the palm back to the floor again. We give that little wiggle through the arms. Taking a few cat cow from here, so just get the spine moving. You know the movement, so just observing any stickier areas of your back. You're welcome to move into your back however feels good. You want to have a wriggle side to side, any other movement, then please do. And then holding back at a more neutral feeling through the spine. Take the right leg back behind you, floating the toes up. Keep pressing through the right palm. If you can, your left hand is going to reach forwards. Continue that cat cow movement through your spine. So the inhale lifts the hand and the foot up to encourage the back bend. And exhale brings elbow to knee underneath the body, scooping it up. Inhale again to lift and lengthen. Exhale, knee and elbow come under, rounding through the spine. Couple more breaths, inhale. Exhaling. Inhale. Now just take the hand to the floor, take the toes down to the back of the mat. Turn out your left shin so you're coming into supported side plank and just circling this top arm around a couple of times either direction just to loosen up the shoulder. So let the movement feel quite fluid, quite free, whichever way it wants to go. Then keeping the fingertips lifting to the ceiling, take the weight into the left palm a little more. So now your right foot, that extended foot, can float up to about hip height. Holding there. If we want to take it a little bit further, try bending that knee so your hand comes around to catch hold of the shoelace bit of your foot. Then press the foot into the hand. So either you draw the shoulder back and feel a chest opening, but you can let that go into the back bend if you want to. Take it back as far as feels good for your back or your chest. Really nice. Good. Take a deep breath. Slowly straighten out that leg again. Sweep the hand around to the floor. Place the knee to the ground. Switching it up so the left leg reaches back. Lift the foot. Maybe lifting the right arm and get the breath moving. So we inhale into this back bend and exhale to draw under, pressing the spine to the ceiling. It inhales to lift and lengthen. Looking good. Exhale, scooping under. Couple more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhaling. So now just take the hand to the floor, the toes down to the back of the mat. Turn out the right shin, coming into the supported side plank, and just give this top arm a bit of a circle. And roll through the wrist as well if it needs it. Change the direction, pop the circles the other way. So lift the fingers up to the ceiling. Make sure your supporting palm is really wide open into the ground. Take the weight into it so the left foot floats up. Maybe we're holding here, or bend the knee to catch hold of the shoelace bit of that foot. Good. Press the foot into the hand so you feel the shoulder draw open. Then allow it, if it wants to, to take into your spine a little more into that lower back. Feel a deep breath, move through the chest space. And then gently lengthen yourself back out again and bring the hand and the knee to the floor. Good. Tuck the toes underneath, come into a downward facing dog. Have a wiggle through your feet, through your hips. Let the head dangle. Take a few sort of yes and no nods of the head to make sure the neck is relaxed. Take a soft bend into both knees. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, try to tip the tailbone further up towards the ceiling, then maybe start to lengthen the legs down a little bit longer. Spread the palms open and drop the shoulders into your back so shoulder blades are wrapped around the ribs so neck can relax. Taking two more deep breaths where you are. Good. 
On your next inhale, roll yourself towards to your plank position, getting that rounding through the upper back as you travel forwards, lengthen yourself out if you need to. Take a breath in in your plank position. And as you exhale, let's take a half chuck around the knees and chest to the ground, looking forwards, elbows in. Slither forwards and up to your cobra, Bhujandasana. Exhale, chest to the floor. Come back up to all fours again, inhale. Tuck the toes and back into downward dog. From here, bring the feet in just a little bit closer towards you so heels can come a little bit closer to the floor. Lift the right leg up towards the ceiling, take a breath in. And as you exhale, bring the knee to your nose underneath the body. Inhale, shoot the toes back up again. Exhale, bring knee to nose underneath the body. We're going to take another two or three breaths here. If you want to up level, send the left hand out. So like we did in all fours, knee and elbow come underneath. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, knee and elbow underneath. No crashing to the floor if you're taking both. Good, last one. Nice. Exhale. Take the hand and the foot to the ground. Lift the left foot up. Do the first two without the hand. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale to lift. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale to lift. Maybe add in the right arm. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. If you're still with me, last one. And take the foot and the hand to the floor. Roll forwards to plank position. Breathe in. Exhale, half or full chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. And as you exhale, travel back into a downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Another full breath out. Slowly start walking your feet towards your hands. Find forward fold at the top of the mat, just hanging out here for a few breaths. And roll the wrists or sway the body. And let anything loosen that needs to. Soften the breath. Allow that Udiyana panda, navel spine, to soften the abdominals inwards so there's no sense of tensing or pulling yourself forwards into the fold. Let the neck relax. Take another deep breath. Now, staying where you are, take a deep breath in. And then slowly use your exhalation to roll yourself to standing so the abdominals have a sense of pushing you up. Keep the chin close to your chest until the rest of the spine is straight. And roll the shoulders down. I'm going to remove a layer. And warming up. Good. Come to the top of your mat. Spread the toes open into the floor, finding some of sticky. Big toes touching, spread the rest of the toes out. Allow the hands to relax down to the sides, but just rotate the palms open. So like you would in your Shavasana, palms up. You create a little sense of opening around the chest. As you inhale, lift the hands towards the ceiling. Interlace the fingers together. Index fingers pointing up, Kali Mudra. So have a sense of the hands trying to pull apart from each other, but because you have hold of them, they don't go anywhere. And take a mini bend into your knees, take a breath in. And as you exhale, hinge the body over towards the right. Close the ribs down into the body, so there's no sense of back bending. On your next inhale, lift through the center. And as you exhale, hinge the body over to the left. Close the ribs in. Take a deep breath. Come back up to the center. Inhale. As you exhale, come into Uttanasana. You can release the fingers. Fingers find the shins or the floor. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, step the right leg, followed by the left leg to plank position. Take a breath in. As you exhale, half or full chaturanga. Inhale to cobra or to up dog. And use the exhale to carry you all the way back to your downward facing dog. Pausing here, three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. 
And lift the left leg up towards the ceiling, take a breath in. Exhale, bring the knee under towards your nose. Inhale, shoot the toes back up high. Exhale, this time step the foot through to between the hands, but with as much control as you can, so stepping it down rather than flinging it down. Come into a high runner's lunge here, so bring the arms up towards the ceiling, take a breath in. And as you exhale, find forward fold at the top of the mat, so back foot steps up. Halfway lift as you inhale, big toes are touching. Exhale, fold into the legs, the left foot followed by the right foot steps back. Take a breath in. Exhale, half or full chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, travel back into your downward facing dog. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Lifting the right foot high, take a breath in. As you exhale, bring the knee towards your nose. Inhale, shoot the toes back high. As you exhale, step the foot through to between the hands. Again, with control, placing it down. Soft bend in the back knee, push through the front heels and lift the arms, breathe in. Exhale, find your forward fold at the top of the mat. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Slowly roll yourself to standing, bring the arms up overhead as you rise. Gentle mini back bend, just to the upper spine, and hips pressing forwards. Take another breath in. Exhale, come back into your forward fold at the feet. Hands stay flat to the ground, so take as much bend as you need to to get them flat. Then take your halfway lift, it's just the breath lengthening the rib cage. Exhale, soften back into the legs. Step the right leg followed by the left to plank. Take a breath in. Exhale, half or full chunk around them. Inhale, lift the chest, cobra or up dog. Exhale, come back into downward dog. Two breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Lift the right leg up. Take the breath in. Exhale, bring the foot through to step between the hands. Again, lightly with control. Lift the arms up towards the ceiling, take a breath in. As you exhale, just place your left hand down next to the foot. Keep the right arm reaching up so you come into a twist. Lift the gaze towards that top palm. Make sure the palm is facing the way that your shoulders are facing now. So chill, still trying to wrap that top shoulder into your back. Connect the top index finger to the tip of your thumb and then circling this arm back behind you, sweep it along the mat and forwards and up to the ceiling as you breathe in again. Exhale, circles it back and down. Inhale, bring it up and round. Couple more circles. Next time the hand comes to the floor, planting it down to the ground, stepping the back foot to the top of the mat. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, soften into the legs, set the left foot, followed by the right foot to plank. Breathe in. Exhale, half or full chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, back to downward dog. Two breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Lift the left foot high, breathe in. Exhale, slowly with control, step the foot down between the hands. Both arms float up as you inhale. Exhale, right hand only, comes back to the floor, keep reaching up with the left. Good, looking up. Connect the index finger to thumb, keep that shoulder plugged into your back. And then start circling the arm back behind you, sweeping fingertips along the floor as you bring it round and up. Good, keep that going with your breath pace, couple more breaths, keeping that front knee hugging in towards the shoulder. Next time the hand comes to the floor, planting it down, set the back foot to the top of the mat, 
Taking your halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, soften into the legs. Have the big toes touching. Take a deep bend in the knees. So we come into chair pose. Our arms floating up and sink the hips a little bit further down and back towards the back heels. Again, strong through the glutes, strong through your core, lifting in through the bonders. Soften through the shoulders. Let go of anything you don't need. Maybe a bit of scrunching in your toes or your forehead. Let it go. So we're going to take a deep breath in here. As you exhale, let the body drop in towards the thighs, the hands sweep back behind you. And as you inhale, reach back forwards and up again, back into the chair. Exhale, breathe through the mouth, let it drop. Inhale, come into the pose. And again, drop. Inhale. Last one, exhale. Inhale, back up, holding. Palms together at the heart center. Bring your right elbow towards left thigh into twist. Pressing the palms together. So thumbs come in front of the sternum at the chest center. Keep the knees pressing together. On your next inhale, come back through center, reaching the arms forwards and up. And exhale, left elbow to right thigh into twist. Press the palms, swizzle the shoulders. Unscrunch the toes. Inhale, come back forwards and up. Repeating that again, right elbow to left thigh. You're feeling a little bit of heat in your thighs. Press the knees together and just see if you can pick up your right foot. So heel comes up towards the buttock. Nice, step the foot back down again. <laughs> Careful, bring the hand forwards and up, inhale. Exhale, left elbow to right thigh. Carefully. See if you can pick up your left toes, heel to buttock. Fix your drishti to your balance. And slowly set the foot down. Nice inhale, reach the hands forwards and up. Exhale into forward fold, straighten the legs, give them a little wiggle out if you need to. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. Now long exhale, stepping or jumping to your chaturanga. Keep breathing out until you've lowered. Now take your time coming into the cobra or up dog, not too much twist. Exhale, come back into downward facing dog. Take a breath. Now right foot is going to float up to the ceiling. And exhale, step it through to between the hands and with control. Turn the back heel to an angle, so we're coming into warrior one, arms floating up. Sink into the pose, get into the front knee, press the feet apart from each other, and again, take out any feeling of back bending, so closing the ribs, sink, almost trying to tuck the tailbone, but really straight through that back leg. Take one more breath in here. Exhale, hands to floor, either roll through the vinyasa or pause in downward dog and meet you there. Move it through your own breath pace. When you're back at German Dog, you can lift the left foot up, breathing in. Exhale with control, stepping it through between the hands, back to the ankles, and the arms float up. Again, pausing here, just root yourself into the pose, feet pressing apart from each other, back knee is straight, slight tucking of the tailbone so you feel the opening around the front of your right hip. Take a deep breath in. Long exhale, carries you through the vinyasa or pausing in a downward dog if you want to skip a chaturanga. Meet back in downward dog. Awesome, good. Take a deep breath. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, set, walk or jump the feet up to your hands, have the big toes touching, halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Take a deep bend in the knees, coming back into chair pose, inhale. Exhale, back into forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhaling. Step or jump back to your chaturanga, with some bees, lots of chaturangas. Inhale, lift you, and exhale, back into downward dog. Good, right foot lifts up, take a breath in. Exhale, step through to between the hands, finding warrior one again, between the arms up as you inhale, 
Hands to heart center, come forward into warrior three as you exhale, slope the back foot. Really think about abdominals drawing in to keep this lower spine from back bending. Really straight through the floating leg, active through the foot. Now reach your arms out in front of you. So long line from fingertips through to heels. Holding, just breathing. Sometimes the still postures are the tougher ones. Last breath in. Slowly as you exhale, take the back foot to the floor again. Roll through the foot with control. Lift the arms, breathe in. And exhale, hands to floor. Either roll through the vinyasa or pause in a grand dog for a couple breaths. Move as you need. Meeting back at down the dog, take a breath. Lifting left foot high as you inhale. Exhale, step through to between the hands. Bring into warrior one, inhaling. Hands to heart center, coming into warrior three as you exhale. Again, holding here, thinking about the abdominals, the bandhas, straightening that back leg, active through the back foot. And if we're feeling steady, reaching the arms forwards again. Try to stay soft through shoulders and neck. Let's keep the gaze to the floor on your drishti. Really good. Take another breath. Slowly take the back foot to the ground. Roll through the foot. Lift the arms. Breathe in. Exhale. Either pausing in down the middle or roll through the vinyasa. When you're back at down the dog, take a full breath. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk or hop the feet up. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Now soften here in the fold. I'm just going to hold for a couple of breaths. So if you want to separate the feet, please do. Soften in the knees or a gentle swing. Let the body dangle. And soften. So staying in the fold, take a breath in. Then using the exhale, as we did earlier, to pull the abdominals in to roll yourself up to standing. Take your time and roll the shoulders down on your back. Good. Now, if you have a brick or anything, we're going to use half moon in the next flow. So if you want something underneath your hand, grab a couple of books or a brick if you wish to. If you don't have something, don't worry about it. Okay, good. So like a sunbeam again, so we start with chair pose, inhale. Exhale to forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale to your chaturanga, you can step or jump. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale to downward dog. Right foot lifts up, breathe in. Exhale, step through. Warrior one, inhale. Warrior three, exhale. Hold in here. So bring the right fingertips to the floor or to your prop. Left hand onto the left hip. Start opening the hips around. You can nudge the underneath toes around a little if you need to. If you're taking care of stuff in your hip and this is feeling aggravating, just stay in warrior three. Good. If we're feeling okay here, then we lift the left hand up to the ceiling. And like we did in all fours, if you want to have a go, bend the knee so you can catch hold of the foot behind you. And press the foot into the hand so again we get the chest opening or the little back bend or a cramp in the hip. Really nice. Take a breath. Good. Start to reverse the way you came. So lengthen the leg back out again. Square the hips to warrior three. Take the hands to the floor, step it back either to your downward dog or roll through the vinyasa, maybe with one foot floating. And meet back in a downward dog if you're lost. Nice, take a deep breath here. Left foot lifts, breathe in. Exhale, step through to between the hands. 
back heel anchors, warrior one, inhale, warrior three, exhale. Left fingertips are going to come to the floor, right hand to your right hip. Start to open the hip bones out to the side, again you can nudge the underneath toes around with you very slightly, just to help avoid nudging the knee. If we're feeling okay here, right hand lifts up towards the ceiling, and maybe we bend the knee so we can catch hold of the foot to press the chest further open. Maybe a little back bend. Oh, it's pretty deep. Well, looking fabulous. Good. So lengthen the leg back out again. Float the hand to the floor. So set the left toes, so the right toes down, and then sweeping it back either through to down the dog or the vinyasa. Meeting back at down the dog. Gaze to hands, bend the knees, step, walk or hop the feet up. Big toes touching, find your chair pose. Inhale. To so stay in chair, hands to heart center, bring your right elbow towards the left thigh, back into twist. Good. Now, like we did earlier, try to take the weight onto your left foot. Right foot slowly kicks off the floor. And then shoot the toes to land lightly at the back of the mat. Stay in a twist if you can. Yes, nice balance, good. From here, lift the hand up towards the ceiling. Take a breath in, so you're back in your high runner's lunge. And then open it around towards the right, so you come into your warrior two. Drop the back heel to the ground. Finding eagle, wrap of the arm. So I'm just going to turn myself so you can see. So your left arm is going to wrap over the right one. Maybe from here we hold on to shoulders. We can, we wrap the hands again, so I think palm to palm. Good, sink into that left knee, get the knee over the line of the toes. That might mean you have to draw the knee back. That might mean your toes have to turn in slightly. So just make sure that alignment is with each other. Reach your elbows forwards and up, spread out the shoulder blades. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, lead from the point of your elbows towards the ground. Feel the back of the ribs staying open. Your little fingers are going to want to lead the way here, so try to keep the elbows reaching down first. Allow your body to, that's lovely, really lean over towards that left foot, but try to keep the shoulders square to the long edge of the mat. You have the sense of grounding and heat in the thighs, but keep a sense of softness and breath fluidity in the upper body. Gently unravel the arms, come into wide leg forward fold, just straighten that left leg, square up the feet, let the body hang between the legs. Head dangling, palms in line with the feet so you're balancing on a beam. Take a couple of breaths. Again, thinking about that softness around the abdominals, so releasing any sense of forcing yourself into something, pushing yourself, allowing the softness to actually carry you further. To see what happens if you just let go. So pressing yourself up very slightly, and then walk the hands around again to the top of the mat. Step back into your downward dog, pausing there, or roll through the vinyasa if you want to keep it flowing. Really good. So back it down with the dog, take a breath. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk or float the feet up to the top of the mat. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Take a deep bend in the knees, come into your chair pose. And as you exhale, left elbow to right thigh. Press the palms together into the twist. The weight is on your right foot, so you can pick up the left toes and slow motion, send them back behind you. My elbow is resting on this wall here, I'll be honest. <laughs> and then unravel the shoulders, lift the hands, take a breath in. And as you exhale, open around to the left into warrior two. Get sink into that front knee. Soften the shoulders down. 
So just try in your warrior two, turning the palms up towards the ceiling so you allow the, the wrapping of the shoulders to sink into your back a little. If you know that feels more comfortable for your neck or your shoulders, make that your warrior two arms generally. I much prefer it here. We add in the eagle arms then, so this time your right arm over the left, maybe holding on to your shoulders, maybe wrapping them again. Take a deep breath in, elbows reaching forwards and up. And as you exhale, elbows lead the way into the fold. Keep that front knee over the alignment of your toes. Again, that might mean nudging your knee or your hip or your foot. Feel the breath move with fluidity. So there's no holding, no restriction of the breath. Stay strong and powerful through the legs. Gently unravel the arms, hands come back to the floor and back into your prasarita, that wide leg forward fold. Soften the head to the ground. So mix up the arms this time, maybe walk the arms through the legs so they're reaching to the wall that you're facing or holding on to outer ankles or out in front of you. See where it feels best. Really nice, good. Folding yourself in half there. Take one more deep breath. Slowly bring the hands back under shoulders, lifting the chest slightly, and walk yourself around towards the top of the mat. So this time, step your back foot up to the top of your mat. Take the feet open a little bit wider, turn the toes out, preparing for Malasana, your squat pose. To send the hips down to between the heels. We're going to see how your knee and your hip feels there. Is that all okay, Judy? Cool, perfect. So either pausing here, bring the hands to the heart center if we can, so we can lengthen the spine a little. Try activating the glutes a little bit just to hold the spine upright. If you want to play around with arm balance, take a couple of breaths into Bakasana, hands to floor, slide the knees up to the shoulders if you're coming with me into the arm balance and transfer the weight forward, so toes float up towards the glutes. Light through the fingertips. Come back into the squat pose if you're still there. Nice, and then your left foot is going to hop back behind you, so you come into lizard. So leave that right foot wide. Back knee can either be on the floor, if you want to take this a little bit more restorative, if you want to strengthen into it as well, working more dynamically, then lift the knee up. See what feels best for your knee or for your hip, for your energy. So thinking hips lower than heart space, soften through the shoulders. If you want to deepen into that more restorative feeling, try dropping the outer elbow, maybe inner elbow, but avoiding still hunching the spine. So if you're looking back towards your thigh, Try to switch the hips low and the chest looking forwards. Take another couple of breaths. If you're on the forearms, bring yourself back to the palms, lift the back knee, and again step your back foot to the top of the mat, coming back into your squat pose, Malasana. Then maybe holding here, take the arm balance again if you want to. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Listen to where your body wants to go, and not wants to go. If you've got a thing in front of your head that's in the way. <laughs> Come back into your squat pose, and then stepping your right leg back behind you. So again, maybe knee is lifted, maybe knee is resting. Entirely up to you. Good, make sure the arms are on the inside of that front leg. So again, if there's room to deepen, try dropping the outer elbow first, then maybe the inner. One side might feel different to the other. One day often feels different to the other with this time of day. So just honor whatever your body needs to you to do or not do. Take another breath. And if you're on the forearms, gently bring yourself back to palms. This time, step it back into your downward dog. 
Paddle the feet. Take a deep bend in both knees. So knees come towards the ribs, ribs towards the knees. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, try to straighten or lengthen through the back of the legs. Inhale again, squatting into the knees. Exhale, straighten and lengthen. Once more, inhaling. And exhale to lengthen. Bring the knees to the floor, finding child's pose. Knees can be wide, knees can be parallel. Arms either out in front or under the forehead. Just taking a couple of breaths in a sensation of rest. Just slow down the breath pace, slow down the heart rate. So that pranayama, back lengthened into rhythm. Slowly start to roll yourself up and either roll yourself over the feet or swing the legs around, bring the legs out in front of you. Lift up the arms, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, we're trying to fold again, Paschimottanasana, as we did at the start of the practice. So just feel into now how your body is here, the sensations that you're feeling. Maybe they feel a little bit different to when we first visited this pose at the start. It's okay if it still feels horrendous. <laughs> Soften where you can. Let go of any holding or forcing from around the shoulders or the neck or the ego. Let's breathe a little deeper. Slowly begin to roll yourself back up straight. Then roll the shoulders down your back. Just let the hands rest back behind you. Lean into the hands. Just give your back a bit of a wiggle or the feet a wiggle in the night. And then bend your knees to the feet, find the mat. And again, give the knees a little rock side to side here. Just loosening off through lower back and hips. Good. Gently bring yourself onto your back with the knees in towards your chest, hugging them in tight towards you. Good. I bring the feet to the floor. I'm going to finish in inversion. Um, I'll give you a couple of options. We're going to start with the bridge pose. So let the spine feel lengthened into the ground. Palms facing up to ceiling. Take a deep breath in. Use the exhale then to roll the spine up away from the floor. Knees are reaching forwards to get the front of the hips lengthened. Active through the glutes. And as you exhale, try to tuck the tailbone any further so we lengthen through that lumbar spine. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, either just holding here, tuck the tailbone again, you start to roll the spine down. However you feel, if you want to stay there, then please stay there. Good. So then we either come into a second bridge pose, or I invite you to find a shoulder stand. Please be really careful with your neck. We want the neck to stay aligned, so there's no turning your head towards the screen. So if you're not sure, I'm going to show you one first, rather than you trying to look towards the screen. So you want to find the lifting of the hips, as you come up, the same sensation as your bridge pose, but the knees come in, pressing into the elbows to help the feet tip back and the hips lift up with control rather than a swinging of the legs up. You're catching the pelvis, your fingers are facing up towards your bum, and then reaching the toes to the ceiling, pointing the feet to see how we go on your own time. So either you're just taking your bridge pose again or a shoulder back. Just so soft and relax as you can through the neck and through the jaw. Taking about five more breaths wherever you are. About three more breaths. Two more breaths. 
Last breath, using the exhale to start to roll yourself back down again. If you're in shoulder stand, let the toes drop back towards your head and then lengthen the spine into the ground, bone by bone, rolling through. Gently place the feet to the floor, well done. Just let the blood come back into the toes, let everything just be soft, avoid wriggling too much at the moment. And give the knees a gentle rock side to side if you need to. Work your way into a Shavasana wherever feels right. Let yourself soften into the ground. Close the eyes, let the breath soften. Allow there to be that gentle pause between your inhale and your exhale. So work that lengthening through the pranayama. Also noticing the sensations in your body. You Notice know, where it feels warmer. Notice you know, where it feels maybe cooler. Maybe lengthened, spaced out. However it's feeling, just observing. Notice how you're feeling on an emotional sense or an energetic sense. It's more holistic sense of being. It's allowing a real sense of stillness in your body and in your mind after that more dynamic practice, that yin and yang of life. It's allowing this sense of calm, this sense of peacefulness wash through the body each time you exhale. Try and keep that sense of calmness, of peacefulness as you just start to deepen the breath. So you marry it with a sense of energy again. When it feels right to bend the knees so your feet find the ground, just lengthen your spine into the floor. And then taking your time, either roll yourself up to seated or take a um, Roll over to one side first if we need to. But keeping the eyes closed wherever you're at. Let the hands just rest into the legs or into the knees. Keeping that sense of softness through the shoulders, particularly through the jaw, the forehead. It's common points of tension that want to creep back in. And as always, I'll just invite you to close your practice, bringing to mind just one thing that you can feel grateful for today. Acknowledge one thing that you really like about yourself today. And recognize how getting to your yoga mat has served you in some way this evening. Good, and then bring that to the heart center. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, bow your head to your hands. Thank you, guys. Namaste. Lovely to see you. See you soon. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, Pippa. Bye, Michael. Thank you. Bye, Bernard. Bye, Mama. <laughs>